Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Last week we got our first look at AMD's Raven Ridge desktop APUs as AMD released the Ryzen 5 2400G and Ryzen 3 2200G and both were very impressive. Despite a grueling four day grind doing nothing but working on our coverage, there's still loads of things that I'd like to cover in much more detail such as overclocking and of course just testing more games. Since publishing our review there's been a heap of questions asked about these new Raven Ridge APUs but the one I've been spotting probably the most frequently has to do with memory allocation for the Vega GPU. Now unlike a typical discrete graphics card like the Vega 64 model that I have here, most integrated solutions don't have their own dedicated memory. So if we take this Vega 64 graphics card as an example, it has 8GB of dedicated memory. So an 8GB memory buffer just for the GPU where it can store data and then access it quickly when it needs to. Because this is a high-end graphics card, it not only has a rather large 8GB buffer, but the bus it uses to access the memory is very fast. HBM2 provides a 2048-bit wide memory bus, and with the memory clocked at 1.25GHz, this allows for a bandwidth of 483GB per second. Further down the food chain, like at the bottom, you'll find graphics cards such as the RX 550. Because the compute performance is around 9 times lower, it doesn't require an 8GB memory buffer either. In fact, the RX 550 would be flat out taking advantage of half that capacity, and in today's games really works just as well with a 2GB buffer. Regardless of capacity though, it uses memory clocked at 1.75GHz and with a 128-bit wide bus can be fed data at 112GB per second. So a typical RX 550 has a 2GB memory buffer and that allows it to shift data in and out of the memory at a theoretical peak bandwidth of 112GB per second. Now if the game requires 3GB of VRAM but you only have 2GB, some game assets then spill over into the system memory. Uh, this is often referred to as RAM. Uh, I covered this in a bit more detail in a video earlier this year that investigated how much RAM gamers need. Basically, shifting data in and out of system memory is significantly slower. The Raven Ridge APUs, for example, are limited to a memory bandwidth of around 35 gigabytes per second. And that's for a system equipped with dual channel DDR4 3200 memory. So in the case of the RX 550, when accessing data locally using the onboard VRAM, it has a bandwidth of 112 gigabytes per second or a theoretical peak bandwidth. But when accessing from the system memory, it's limited to around 35 gigabytes per second. So it takes at least three times longer to process the same amount of data when moving to the system memory. However, if your computer then runs out of system memory, game assets are moved to the local storage device. This means your hard drive or hopefully an SSD. And depending on how fast that device is and how heavily it's hit with data, it's at this point that you'll very likely see a noticeable dip in frame rate as the bandwidth is now reduced to around 500 megabytes per second with an SSD, if you're lucky. Keeping all that information in the back of the old noggin, the Vega GPU integrated into the Raven Ridge APU has no local memory to speak of. Now, some integrated GPUs like the Vega M graphics that'll be found in the new Intel KB Lake G processors, they do have their own dedicated memory, and this greatly enhances performance, but it also greatly increases the cost as well. Since AMD's Raven Ridge APUs are budget solutions, it wasn't going to be possible to include HBM2 memory and it simply doesn't make sense at this point in time. So with no dedicated VRAM, they use system memory exclusively and this means they are restricted to a bandwidth of around 35 gigabytes per second with a system using dual channel DDR4 3200 memory. Of course, bandwidth is just part of the issue here. Memory capacity also plays a key role. A system with a base model RX 550 graphics card, for example, and 8GB of DDR4 memory, effectively has 10GB of total memory to play with. But when using Vega 8 or 11 graphics on a Raven Ridge APU, you now just have 8GB of memory to share between the CPU and GPU. Generally speaking, Windows does a very good job of managing memory and prioritizing applications for best results. That said, at least some portion of your system memory will be partitioned and allocated to the integrated graphics. The Raven Ridge APUs, for example, use a method called Unified Memory Architecture, or UMA for short. Right now, most AM4 motherboards let you set the memory size somewhere between 64 megabytes and 2 gigabytes. Depending on the size, your select will determine the amount of system memory that is allocated exclusively to the Vega graphics. That is to say, once allocated, it can only be used as graphics memory, and therefore can no longer be accessible by the operating system or the applications that run on it. Now, this is where I'm seeing a bit of confusion and misinformation. Some people are claiming that for best results, reviewers need to test with the frame buffer set to the maximum possible size, and right now that's two gigabytes. However, this isn't necessarily true, and in fact, most of you watching this video who have built or plan on building their own Raven Ridge system will want to do the complete opposite. 
you're actually far better off selecting the absolute minimum amount of memory that you can allocate to the GPU. Because as I said, once you do allocate that portion of your system memory to the graphics processor, that's all it can be used for. For example, when in Windows doing things that don't really require much video memory at all, you just have a significant chunk of your memory there partitioned off that you can't use. So if you were to select a two gigabyte buffer, for example, on a system that has eight gigabytes of DDR4 memory, that would mean that you now only have six gigabytes of system memory available. Available. But you're a gamer and you want the maximum gaming performance possible, so just set it to the highest value for those sweet, sweet frame rates. Well, no. Again, you don't want to do that. As I discussed earlier, when using a discrete graphics card, once the graphics memory or VRAM fills up, the game assets are just loaded into the system memory. In the case of the Ravenridge APUs, we're using system memory exclusively, so regardless of whether you allocate 64 megabytes or 2 gigabytes, it doesn't really matter. For example, if a game requires 2 gigabytes of video memory, but you've only allocated 64 megabytes, usage just spills over into the shared memory. And because it's all the same memory, the bandwidth remains the same. And therefore, within reason, so too does the performance. As I said, Windows manages this very well, so by allocating 2 gigabytes, you're just restricting the operating system's ability to better manage the system memory. When trying to make sense of why AMD was offering a one gigabyte or a two gigabyte frame buffer, I had initially thought that maybe reserving a certain amount of memory, say two gigabytes, would ensure maximum gaming performance as the operating system didn't have to shuffle around things, especially when using just eight gigabytes of RAM opposed to you know, 16 gigabytes or more. However, after testing various configurations, I found this had little to no impact when gaming, as certainly nothing you'd actually notice. Using both 8GB and 16GB of dual channel DDR4 3200 memory with the exact same timings, I found no real difference in performance between reserving 64MB or 2GB of system memory for example. I did test half a dozen different modern titles that all called for around 2-3GB of VRAM at 1080p using the low to medium quality settings. But rather than look at the half a dozen titles that I've tested, all of which show the exact same thing, I'm just showing the Battlefield 1 results at 720p and 1080p, along with some additional testing I did with Metro Last Light. As you can see with Battlefield 1, all the results are within the margin of error for the three run average, and we're not just talking about the average frame rate, but also the frame time performance as well. I've heard a few reports that Metro Last Light, of all games, saw a massive performance uplift when going from 512MB to 2GB. I stopped testing with this title about three years ago now, so I thought that would be odd if true, but decided to check it out anyway. As you might expect from this rather old game, it does use very little memory, and we saw no difference in performance when comparing the average frame rate at 720p and 1080p, and the same is true for the frame time results as well. Given what we discussed previously before getting into all the results, this probably shouldn't be that surprising. Regardless of whether the Vega GPU is accessing data via the allocated memory or not, it's still using the same system memory and therefore it's limited to the same bandwidth and in our case that was around 35 gigabytes per second. In fact, we can look at this a little more closely. Using the ADA64 GP GPU benchmark tool, we can measure read and write performance between the CPU and GPU. Effectively measuring the performance, the GPU can move data in and out of its own device memory into the system memory. This is called device to host bandwidth. But more importantly, and this is what we're going to focus on, you can also look at copy performance. This test measures the performance of the GPU memory by copying data from its own device memory to another place within the same device memory. So in the case of the RX 550, that would be the onboard GDDR5 memory. But in the case of the Ravenridge APUs, that is our DDR4 system memory. Here we can see that with 64 megabytes of RAM allocated to the Vega 8 GPU and the 2200G, we have a throughput of 33.4 gigabytes per second when copying data from within the system memory. And that's pretty much in line with the 35 gigabytes per second the CPU cores have when accessing the dual channel DDR4 3200 memory. If we increase the allocation size to two gigabytes, this has no impact on bandwidth. In fact, based on an average of three runs, we saw a slight decrease, but of course these results are within the margin of error. Given how long this test takes to run, it's safe to assume we're transferring well over 2GB of data, so we're not just benchmarking within the allocated buffer. Then if we look at the RX 550, which as I've mentioned many times in this video, has a theoretical peak bandwidth of 112GB per second, we can see that in this test it's good for 88GB per second. Then for comparison, I tried out Vega 56 and we hit 321GB per second, and this model has a theoretical peak bandwidth of 410GB per second.
So all the evidence suggests that setting the iGPU allocated memory buffer beyond 64 megabytes is pointless and on systems with limited RAM even a bit foolish. That said, while I've tested quite a few games and applications now, I haven't tested all of them. Of course, I'm just not able to. There simply aren't enough hours in the day. The only reason I can think of why you might want to increase the reserve memory buffer is for games that need or detect a certain amount of VRAM before they'll actually load. Uh, we've seen this in the past with games that have these built-in safeguards that won't allow you to load them without meeting a minimum hardware spec. It's very annoying as the game developer isn't really saving anyone from anything, certainly no real harm. Instead, they're just inconvenience gamers that probably have acceptable hardware, but are just waiting on a driver update to improve detection. I expect that AMD will always deliver new drivers uh, to solve these issues if and when they arise, but we might see situations where in the meantime, gamers can increase the allocation to meet the VRAM requirements, and that will allow them to load the game. So short of any potential compatibility issues, I can't really think of any reasons why you'd want to sacrifice more than 64 megabytes of memory to the GPU, but maybe you guys have some ideas that I haven't thought of. Also, please note 64 megabytes might be an extreme example. Maybe err on the safe side and set it to 512 megabytes, or you could just go with 64 megabytes like I am and wait till you run into some kind of issue. And if you do run into an issue, please let me know about it because I would like to investigate. If you do happen to run into an issue, all you have to do is reset the system, increase the allocation size, and then boot back into Windows, and you should be right. Since most APU users will be using two four gigabyte memory modules for an eight gigabyte capacity, especially those buying the incredibly good value Ryzen 3 2200G for $110 US, those users will wanna save as much memory as possible. And by telling them to lop off one or two gigabytes for the Vega GPU seems like really bad advice based on my findings. So finally, circling all the way back to when I was discussing trying to make sense of why AMD was offering up to a 2GB frame buffer, and there's even been talk that AMD is pushing board partners to offer a 4GB option. So I guess I have to ask the question, why AMD? Why give your customers the ability to degrade their experience on your very impressive Raven Ridge APUs? Well, after a bit of thinking, I think the answer to this question is probably quite obvious. It just has to do with marketing. AMD has to play the game, and that's the game of numbers. Big numbers. Big is always better. <laughs> For example, 2 gigabytes or up to 2 gigabytes of graphics memory sounds a wee bit better than 64 megabytes. Now, that said, AMD doesn't actually appear at this stage to be advertising the Vega 8 or Vega 11 memory spec. And maybe once they push for that four gigabyte allocation, we'll start to see this pop up. Don't get me wrong though, it's certainly nice to have this option should you need it for whatever reason, one of those reasons I haven't yet thought of. But in my opinion, AMD really needs to educate buyers on the issue and probably reviewers as well so we can inform you guys on which settings you should be using and why. Uh, Raven Ridge is far more appealing in the low end if you can have almost all 8 gigabytes of your system memory when using non-gaming applications in Windows rather than just being fixed with 6 gigabytes, for example. And that's where I'm going to end today's video. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button, subscribe for more content, and if you appreciate the testing we do here at Hardware Unbox, then consider supporting us on Patreon, where you'll gain access to our Discord chat and monthly live stream. Thanks for watching. I'm your host, Steve. See you again next time.